Hello, 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 everybody here is Dr. Well, again, talking about different topics and science. Remember, guys, that we create and design this podcast to let everybody know about Harvard University and the magazine of Harvard Medical School. You can also visit our official website, which is magazine.hme.harvard.edu. You will be able to browse thousands of thousands of articles by issue or by topic. You will be asking Dr. Well, which topics do we have? Research, community education, care delivery hours, and achievement. The title of the article to review today is Altering Perceptions on Psychedelics. Growing evidence for the safety and efficacy of psychedelics could lead to better treatments for anxiety, depression, pain, and other often irritable conditions. Jerry Rosen was intrigued when he first heard about the effect that psilocybin, the hallucinogenic compound found as certain species of mushrooms, was proposed to have on the brain testing state. What noticed Science called the default mode network associated with daydreaming and thinking about the past or the future. The default mode network encompasses any neuronal function that has some bearing on our autobiographical tendencies. From Cambridge, Massachusetts, at Harvard University Medical School, I want to remind to everybody who's listened to Dr. Wild that we do mostly days these beautiful reviews. I continue doing this review straight away. Given the natural of the result, I was eager to learn more, recalls Rosen, the Stanley Co. professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. The information that grabbed Rosen's attention was being delivered by Robin Carr Harris, a huge grant at young Brit speaking remotely from the United Kingdom to participants at the 2018 Conference on Psychedelics at the Broad Institute in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Carver Harris, a psychologist, and head of the Center of Psychedelic Research at Imperial College London was describing recent neuroimaging research out of the laboratory demonstrating that when people take psilocybin and low doses, a default mode network becomes less active. That is, the drug appears to tend self-reflection and all but ruin rumination that obsessive mental state characterized by excessive repetitive dose. Then say the rumination itself reflection when a race, says Charmin Gans, a Harvard Medical School instructor in psychiatry and attending psychiatry at Massachusetts General Hospital. Rumination is a hallmark cognitive symptom of depression. Last November, a pharmaceutical company announced promising, although not yet published, results from clinical trials of psilocybin effects on severe depression. The researchers found that nearly 30% of the participants giving 25 milligrams of the compound were in remission three weeks after treatment compared at less than 10% of those in the control group. These studies findings were generally considered encouraged by research in the file. At the time of its completion, it was the largest randomized control double trial of psilocybin to have been conducted. Ganas and Rosen are among those who see promise in the findings and know that they would be especially compelling if the drug being studied were the traditional antidepressant, but psychedelic research is in an early stages and the threshold for results being judged impressive in high. There is so much we still have to learn, that's why they say. And our researchers and psychedelic therapists also attended Harry's talk and remembered Rosen's enthusiasm. They went out to dinner with a few peers afterwards and bay around some ideas. Seeing evidence of decreased default mode network activity really piqued Jerry's curiosity. The dinner provided the initial spark of the Center for the Neuroscience of Psychedelic at Massachusetts General Hospital 
Portugal, launched in early 2021, the center aims to access how psychedelic systems will be used to improve the treatment of mental health illness, like depression, anxiety, systems abuse, eating disorders, phobia, obsessive compulsive disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. want to understand what is happening in the brain from molecular to cellular to network and beyond, Rosen said what happened that allows people to improve and recover and what sustains that. A constellation of researchers as interconnected and electrified of neuronal networks many of them study has emerged not just at Massachusetts General Hospital but though at Harvard Medical School ecosystems and beyond with expertive in multiple files, from palliative cares to psychiatry to law, these experts have a dedicated interest in peace together the way psychedelic therapies could transform medicine immediately and may permanently. Their efforts seem timely with the gun culture movement of the 60s and 70s and the anti-drug movements of the 80s presenting into our collective past. The stigma associated with psychedelic has grown significantly. Scientists, mental health professionals, legislators, and the public at large are becoming increasingly fascinated by the possibility that psychedelics could alleviate some of the most extreme varieties of human psychological disease. Important studies, once frozen by structured flesh on certain hallucinogens under the 1971 United States Control Substance, and are being given a second life through philanthropically found research initiates at Yale, Yacht Hawkins, University of California, San Diego, and Berkeley campuses. In January, the National Institutes of Health hosted a groundbreaking free virtual workshop on psychedelic at the therapeutic for some 1,500 attendants. A psychedelic resonance is upon us from a commercial standpoint too. According to one analysis, the market of psychedelic could be worth $7 billion by 2027. JMMA reported that as of January 2022, there were more than 50 published trade companies in this space, with at least three United States company value at more than $1 billion, and bills are being introduced in a state legislature across the country, from Washington and California to Pennsylvania and Maine, to legalize medical psilocybin, decriminalize or both. To spin Harold, the Harvard Medical School Associate Professor of Neurology and Scientist Director of Chemical Neurobiology for the Mass General Center thinks something special is happening at Harvard. In the 25 years I have been at Harvard, I haven't seen anything that has as much potential to connect the Faculty of Arts and Science, the Medical School, the Divinity School, and even the Law Schools, says him, we have an amazing world-class community of investigators across the whole spectrum.
All right, guys, here who's listened to Dr. Go Wild, this big question that is in this beautiful article. We really want to understand what is happening in the brain from molecular to cellular to network and beyond what happened that allows people to improve and recover. All right, so answers. Franklin King, a Harvard Medical School instructor in psychiatry and director of education and training at the Mass General Center, says the changing the narrative goes beyond just rethinking Harvard history. It is with also in turn reflecting on the difference between treatment and healing, the definition of cure and doctor's patient relationship. Most people who are really invested in this world have some kind of commitment to changing the paradigm underneath. He says he acknowledged how that it may be a long time before we can safely decrease hallucinogens into the therapeutic practice. King's points out the psychedelic drugs have long been an accepted part of any of the world cultures and that recent adopters of psychedelic assisted therapy must take care not to appropriate the strategies that assume they are immediately compatible, nor ordinary states or constituents has been integrated into communities in most civilizations other than dominion civilizations of the West of the past two millenniums, King says. That is not a commentary of whether this drug will be safe or not safe. It's some future theoretical situation We are different cultures. Scientists seem to agree that the primary reason psychedelic drugs trigger non-ordinary state of consciousness is that they bind to a particular receptor in the brain, which promotes the release of serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, and other chemical messengers into synapses. What experts don't understand is how this temporary experience produces long-lasting positive neural changes. The deepest neuroscience question here is the basis of that persistence. Ogerly says his lab is researching for clues about what happens after the psychedelic agent targets its receptor. If he and his colleagues can trade the resulting domino effects of the brain circuit and figure out which aspects help catalyze the therapeutic response, they would uncover new pharmaceutical strategies for more effectively targeting and circumventing the receptor altogether. Since psychedelia appear to rewaken the brain neuroplastic potential prompting the chill-like state of openness and wonder, they are inciting lens through which to explore more than psychiatric disease. Alright guys, remember you can download this article from the official website at Harvard University in the magazine. Remember the website is magazine.hml.harvard.edu. The article title is Altering Perceptions on Psychedelics. Alright guys, see you next time. Bye bye.